Hello YouTube. It is I again. Filming another Friday video. Technically filming this on a Thursday, but I'll be up free to view on Friday. Unless if you're up very late or something. But most of you will see this on Friday, hopefully. It's been getting a lot colder and darker here on the last frontier. You can feel the Christmas in the air. It's been awfully windy and awfully rainy. Every day in the past few days. I've been keeping warm though. Flannel plaid flannel shirts have been the uh, common attire here, obviously. I've been wearing my wool hat every day. I've been growing my beard, getting ready for the harsh winter to come. We've had awful windstorms yesterday, where the wind was just blowing and blowing and I couldn't get a lot of sleep. Luckily, no damage has been done to the property, and I'm quite thankful for that. Now that it's getting later in September, and the chill is in the air, I need to start preparing for winter time. Put all the garden hoses away, get them all dried out and wrapped up. Get the insulators on the spigots, start winterizing everything. This morning, I noticed the termination dust on the top of the mountains. Now you're probably wondering, what is termination dust? Well, it's a local Alaskan term here that we use for the first snow on top of the mountains. So, more specifically in the Anchorage area, we have the uh, Chugach Range, which is the closest um, mountain range to us, and they now have snowy peaks. So it's definitely autumn time now, and I am hoping for a much better winter this winter. As you known from my past videos, one of my first videos of the winter time here in Alaska was quite, uh, let me say, a disappointment. We didn't get any snow really. The ground was all dirty and frozen. It was the most miserable thing any human being has ever encountered. It's not natural to us up here in the last frontier to experience such lack of snow. We're used to feet upon feet upon feet of snow. Piles. I remember as a kid, I would make large snow forts in the front yard and local friend of mine I'm still good friends today would build up these big piles of snow awfully big piles of snow let it sit for a while after the snow has sat and settled we'll dig into it and make a little snow cave it was a lot of fun could we do it last winter no not at all. Usually, it would get snow around Halloween time, end of October, beginning of November. But we'll see. We didn't have that last year. And it's been somewhat warm during the days in comparison to most late Septembers.
so we'll see. It's been awfully rainy. I can definitely feel the chill uh, currently here on, uh, I believe it's the 22nd. Um, I guess Google told me that was the first day of autumn. Well, it's been autumn here. I consider for at least South Central Alaskan autumn to be the beginning of September to be autumn. Well, now it's officially autumn and all the leaves are quite carbon brown yellows all the pretty autumnal colors that one can experience in well autumn time with the big winds that we had yesterday a lot of those leaves have blown off the trees into my front yard what does that mean for me well tomorrow I'll probably be raking for most of the day It also means I'll be drinking more coffee and hot chocolate. <laughs> that is what I like. Nice cup of hot coffee in the morning. And a nice cup of hot cocoa before bed. By golly. I'm afraid I haven't got to my housekeeping. Smoking my... Dogno Rocky, Peterson Pipe, in it, the uh, Sewer's Folly. Which is a very good autumn blend, it being an English blend and all that. I always feel that English blends are a great autumn blend. As I explained before in my past videos, they're very campfire-y. I always like a good campfire when it gets cold like this. You can see my breath. See that? That's not the smoke. It's my breath. I can see my breath in September. Welcome to Alaska. I'm also wearing fleece lined pants, if you can imagine that. Hmm. School has been going well. And I hope all of you on the other side of the internet have been doing well as, just as well. <laughs> as I say well, it's just way too many times. All is well. still been working on my project, as I said in my last video, which has been going well. You know, that should be a drinking game. Every time I say well, you should have a drink. I'm drinking water, by the way. You can join me in drinking water or whatever libation, libation, whatever you want to call it, liquid they would like to consume. Last weekend, um, as I said, I went to Talkeetna with the family, which was uh, very good. Uh, Talkeetna is a beautiful place this time of year. And it happened to be, there was a beer festival going on, the Talkeetna Beer Fest. And all the breweries in Alaska, well not every single one, but a good majority of the breweries, had a little stand to sample their beers. So I did that for a good, I don't know, four to five hours <laughs> four to five hours of drinking beer as you can see uh, what can come of that but again it was Talkeetan and all of you from Alaska know about Talkeetan of course all the tourists are walking around still but uh, now that's getting later in September we'll see less and less of the touristy type I have nothing against the tourists I am all for tourists in Alaska that is a major industry here and it brings us money over there. I love tourists.
which always makes me feel great, since I'm a local Alaskan, obviously. They would come up to me and ask me questions. Oh, where's Denali? Where's Denali? Oh, it's that way. Sorry, it's covered up in clouds, as it usually is, so you can't take a good photo of it. Man, as much as I would love to start, I think I might do. This just reminds me of like a nice crackling fire. I might do that tonight. Might, it's kind of chilly with the wind and the rain. And after I'm done with my pipe, start a fire in the fireplace. Maybe after dinner, have a spot of whiskey. I have this big bottle of the um, bullet bourbon, which is really good. I really like the the bullet bourbon. That's a good uh, it's a good whiskey. Buy it at Costco. I love Costco. A lot of a lot of us here like Costco. I'm sure a lot of you who have Costco in your area probably shop at Costco too. But it tends to be my liquor store because it's cheaper. And you buy in bulk. <laughs> That's what they're good at. So buy my whiskey in bulk. <laughs> I also have a lot of beer, but I don't buy my beer at Costco. I have beer from other places, and I work at a brewery, so I am good with alcoholic drinks. Something about having, you know, a tumbler of whiskey by a fire is just great with your dog curled up at your feet, reading a book or the newspaper or something. I'm actually getting kind of cold. I might need to start wearing a larger coat. It's cold. It's getting cold here. I only get colder and darker. When I wake up in the morning, it's dark. At 6 to 7 o'clock. It is dark and the street lamps are on. It doesn't get light until I'm off to either school or work. I have to be at work at 8 o'clock. Not tomorrow, but Saturday. Well, I guess if you're watching this Friday, it will be tomorrow. <laughs> uh, then it gets dark going to work, and then eventually it's dark while I'm working. 8 o'clock. Right now it gets... I mean, it's still light, as you can see. I can do these videos. But it will get dark around... Hmm... 7.30, 8... Right now we're at the the um, the autumn the autumnal equinox, so it's only going to get darker and it gets dark quick here, very quickly. It's no longer the land of the midnight sun, but the land of the eternal darkness. It's true. And I'll have to don more layers. I have to admit. I think most of the cold is coming from my feet because I'm wearing flip-flops without any socks. Now mind you, I was wearing smart wool socks. As you, some of you know, smart wool is like the synthetic wool that, um, I don't know, it's cheaper to produce, it's not as itchy, and it lasts longer to keep your feet ever more warm, I guess. I don't know. I wear smart wool socks. Wool socks. Yes, that's the life I live, but I wouldn't want to have it any other way. I have that, um, which I think I featured in uh, some of these videos, the um, decommissioned, or I guess, um, what do you call it, um, surplus, a surplus uh, pico from the US Navy, which is so warm. They're made to be warm, obviously. Winter grade, naval pico, very thick. I got it personally tailored to me. It's so nice. So I'll have to uh, break that out soon. It's almost peak coat season. Such a warm coat. But it's getting cold here. Very cold. So I hope the rest of you are enjoying your autumn months. 
and uh, I'll be enjoying my autumn for the short amount that I have it until it becomes winter in late October and November. Once it's like November, it's winter all the way till April. Winter. Whole month of November, all the way, whole month of April. November, December, January, February, March. And some of April, so like about five and a half months of winter. Obviously it's been changing, obviously global warming and things like that. Where we have unnaturally warm uh, summers and springs and falls, even though it's quite chilly today. But overall, it's still been warmer than average. It's a concern. It really is. I'm not sure if you've noticed in the news that the, um, the Arctic ice and the Arctic Ocean have been melting exponentially ever since the 70s. Since the study's been really going on, obviously it's probably been melting a lot since the Industrial Revolution and all the pollution that we've been putting out. But now, the Northwest Passage is open, and I was reading an article about a cruise ship. A cruise ship that is sailing the Northwest Passage. Sails all the way from Homer, I guess. Obviously, I think it start, starts in Seattle or somewhere, but it goes up to Alaska and then around uh, the Bering Strait to Nome and all the way up to the Arctic Ocean around through the ever so famous Northwest Passage that people have been looking for for ages that is now open. We have an actual Northwest Passage that is quite passable now because of the ice melt. A cruise ship that people, tourists can take all the way through the Arctic Ocean and go all the way down to New York. Now, I'm a really big fan of the history of uh, the whaling industry. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of whaling itself because that was another atrocity of the um, Northern Oceans. But they'd be so jealous of us today, having that Northwest Passage open. And all the other old-time sailors, you know, who were trying to find the Northwest Passage to get over to the West Coast a lot easier. Now in 2016, a reality. What does that mean? Great for industry, for shipping industry. But, hmm, awful for the environment. Double-edged sword, but that's what Alaska's industry is all based on. A double-edged sword. The oil industry that's been running our state since the 1970s. Till today and ever going. Obviously, taking the resources from the ground, oil drilling, things like that. And, um running our economy, but maybe not the best for the environment. Again, there's a balance. Economy and the natural world around us. How are you going to balance it? I don't know. Here's another issue for you. Northwest Passage is now open. Look it up. What will it bring to Alaska? What new business um, opportunities will it bring? What, more, what other kind of money and industry will it bring? But what will it do to our environment? So I'll have uh, you think about that on this video, uh, hopefully <laughs> on a better note, I'm getting a little less political now, and say that all of you have an awesome fall, autumn, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.